Okay, here we go. Chapter eight. We are talking about water. And this goes along with the, um, the lab that I assigned, the, the uh, drinking water analysis lab. Make sure that you listen to the, the chapter seven um, go to meeting for details of that water analysis lab. All right, so water plays a huge role in everything we do. Uh, we are us you and me, humans, we are 60% water. The earth is covered, um, 71% of the earth's surface is covered by water. Uh, we, you know, if you drive across the U.S., you, you say, wow, there's a lot of land before you get to the West Coast. That's only 30%. 30% of the earth's surface is land, so we have huge amounts of oceans. Um, so there's a quote, um, Rachel Car Carson's is kind of our hero here, here in Pittsburgh because she's from nearby Pittsburgh and so we claim her anyway and she was a really famous environmentalist who got all upset appropriately over DDT. And, um, but anyway, and, so, and she wrote a book called Silent Springs that um, had a a very significant impact on environmental law um, and regulation. So, I mean, she really made a difference in her life. But anyway, in her book, Silent Spring, she has a quote that says, by far, the greater part of the Earth's surface is covered by sea, yet we are in want. And so what does that mean? It means um, we have a whole lot of water out there, but um, we can't use most of it. Why not? It's mostly salt water. <laughs> you can't drink salt water. Also, industrial water, who wants to drink that? Agricultural water, you know, <laughs> um, seeping away from a, a cattle barn. You don't want to drink that. Uh, so there's a lot of water that... Um, isn't available for use. Um, so water, it, water is not unlimited. Actually, it's just like the carbon cycle. So we talk about carbon, around and around she goes, where she, where she stops, no one knows, you know, that kind of a thing. It's, it's circling between life and the atmosphere or being stuck underground somewhere as fossil fuel. Um, well, water is the same way. It's neither created nor destroyed. It just changes location where it is found. Um, and of course, it's not evenly distributed across the earth. I mean, we have a, a heck of a lot of it around here, but even recently, my yard is in bad shape because we haven't had much rain. Um, so even in a place like Pittsburgh, which certainly um, do, would never, no one would ever say it's a dry climate, um, we still have issues with having enough water. Um, water is really unique. We, it has all kinds of properties we're going to talk about, but, but I've written one of them on the board that is, um, well, among other other uh, properties, it's it's unique for water, and um, here it is. So we talked about Rachel Carson's quote, and then we have some unique qualities of water we're going to be talking about, and the very first one of these is written up here on the board, and it says that water, water, is the only common substance that can exist as solid, that's ice, liquid, that would be water, or as a gas, water vapor, um, at Earth average temperatures. So everything else is um, in is at various temperatures. It can be in all of these different states, but the the Earth average temperatures, it's going to be one or the other of these states. It's not going to be switching back and forth between. Um, gas and liquid and solid, which is what water does. Um, what about water? Some other 
other really unique qualities of water. When you think of a solid, generally speaking, and this is not for water, but in for virtually everything else, um, a solid is the most dense form. The, the atoms are closest together in the solid, and then they're a little further apart when it's a liquid and much further apart when it's a gas. That is not the case with water. Think about it. You put, a, put ice in your drink, it doesn't sink to the bottom. It floats. Cold water is more dense than solid water. Ice floats. That is incredibly unusual. It doesn't happen. Um, what else? Um, water, um, water uh, let's see, it's most dense. Oh, it has a high heat capacity. So a lot of stuff dissolves in it. Um, and it can absorb a lot of heat, and it can, and it will slowly give up that heat. And you might say, well, why do I care about that? Well, it moderates the climate. If I was to talk to you about the climate in London, and, and you may or may not have ever been there, I haven't been there, but I know from everything you hear about, in winter, it's just rainy, it's rainy, wet and foggy, right? Well, do you know another city that is on the same latitude, same distance far north as London is Anchorage, Alaska. Now you would not say they have the same weather. They do not have the same weather. Why, why isn't London cold as heck like Anchorage? And the answer is the ocean. The ocean, it's an island that has um, the Gulf Stream. It's a warm water current that carries warm water north to England, and it makes for a much milder climate than you would.